market or not ICOs or not what would be called securities, even in the U.S., Canada, and Taiwan, the three jurisdictions that follow something similar to the Howey test that we've talked about. Three quarters of the market is, is non-securities. It's just a commodity, a cash crypto. Um, so you'll hear debates about initial coin offerings and what's a security and what's not a security. Relevant, relevant and important debate. But for three quarters of the market, it's not particularly relevant as a legal matter. Ah, the good times when Gary Genzer stood up before a class and said, yeah, roughly the entire crypto market is non-securities. And that was in 2018. Don't know what happened. Everybody, welcome to the live stream here on Saturday. So a lot of things to go over, so let's just jump right in. So first of all, the things we're going to talk about, and it's important that you know these things, uh, the different things of uh, malware and scams and the things that are going on in the background. It's not about how much you make, it is how much you keep. So it's vitally important that you understand what's going on right now. But you know, as we go forward and move into the markets, this is what's really important. It's the things that you can control within your sphere of control. You can't deal, you can't change the past. You can't change outcomes. You can't change the markets, really. And you can't really worry too much about the future. What you can control is your words, thoughts, actions, awareness, and how you treat people around you. So that's what I'm trying to do here as we talk about finance. So this just came out this morning. I didn't want to scare anybody by saying something like, you know, big finance hack or something like that. It's malware. And it's an important lesson here. And this is what is going on. This is from their official blog post. There's an ongoing global malware attack. And it's focusing specifically on, I'm not for sure if this is just all crypto wallets or if this is specifically to Binance crypto wallets. But they put this out and I thought it'd be important for everybody. And here's how to stop it. So this are the main takeaways. Malware is altering users' crypto withdrawal addresses, leading to significant financial losses for victims. These are all, these are all addresses. We'll, we'll talk about how to get around this. Binance's security teams identifying and blacklisting suspicious addresses, informing affected users, and monitoring and counteracting these threats. We recommend that users verify the authenticity of apps and plugins, double check withdrawal addresses and stay informed to protect themselves. So this first part right here where they say, we recommend that users verify the authenticity of apps and plugins. Let's be, let's just call a spade and spade and just be honest. We have so many different plugins probably in our, in our browser. We have different apps that we have downloaded. It would be very difficult for us to say, well, this one is good and that one's good, especially as we've gone through and we've had third-party API attacks because of some kind of lazy different development that has gone on in the background. So for you to go through every single one of your apps and go, okay, this one's bad, this one's good, this one's not, so I don't know about this one. It's very difficult. Of course, we can say do your own research, but what's that going to do for you? Not much. Here's where you can be helped. So this type of malicious software, often referred to as Clipper malware, it intercepts data <clears throat> stored in your clipboard. So when you like copy and paste, and this primarily targets crypto wallet addresses. Again, when they talk about crypto wallet addresses, I think they're talking about the entire crypto wallet addresses, not specific to Binance, but since Binance is the biggest, largest global centralized exchange, they're getting hit the most here. When a user copies and pastes a wallet address to transfer crypto, the malware replaces the original address with one designated by the attacker. And what they're very smart in doing is that when you sometimes copy and paste these crypto addresses, and I'm guilty of this myself, you'll take a look at the first four or five and the last four or five and go, yeah, it's good. And then off you go. But what they're doing is in between, in the middle addresses, which sometimes on different cold storage devices and hot wallets, they don't even show those. So if you have those types of devices, you either have to expand that wallet or expand that address to make sure and double, triple check that's going to the right place. I've already had a couple of people tell me that they have sent those, sent their transactions to the wrong addresses, which looked like the right address. So again, to help you and talk about, well, these malware, different apps that you may have on your phone or these different downloads that you have in your Chrome or Safari or Brave browser, it's not gonna help you. What's going to help you is you're going to have to now double, triple check. And we talked about this before, before you send anything, because once it goes someplace, there is nobody you can call. That's the beauty of blockchain. And, you know, some of the parts that's negative, I guess, but it is what it is. Put your big boy pants on and make sure you don't screw up. Anyhow, 
Let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And also, Ellie Pal. I got this from uh, my friend Diego over in, in uh, Puerto Rico. And, and he sent this to me. He goes, hey, man, I just want you to know about that there's been a hack for Ellie Pal, the, the uh, cold storage device. And I was like, hmm, let me take a look. So this was the email that he got. And if you have Ellie Pal, you know, probably want to listen to this part. It states, we regret to inform you that Ellie Pal has experienced a security breach affecting approximately 86,000 of our customers in the wallet associated with your email address is within those affected by the breach. So they have their email address list and they send it all out to their, to their people. Our forensics team has found several of the LEPAL live administrative servers to be infected with malware, which is what we were kind of taking a look at over here. At this moment, it is technically impossible to, conclu to conclusively assess the severity and the scope of the data breach due to these circumstances, we must assume that your crypto assets are at risk of being stolen. If you're receiving this email, it isn't because you've been affected by the breach in order to protect your assets. Please download the latest version of Elipal Live and follow the instructions, set up a new pin for your wallet. Sincerely, Elipal. There's a link right there to download the latest version. Sounds good, right? I'm going to stop right here. And I'm going to ask you right now in the comment section, does this look legit? What would you do right here? I'm just going to take a break because I'm just curious to see how people would handle this. And let me go into the uh, comments here. Zoran, hello. Hey, Nas. Hey, Kat. Community's all here. Thank you. <laughs> I, I didn't tune up for homework. Big boy pants, Rob, really. Yes, exactly. Not a hack. Yes, yes, yes. Should still hold. Ethan Polygon is the dead chain. Ah, we'll get to that in the Q&A section. Yeah, Uzi says, to me, looks legit. Some people say never. Daniel said, do nothing. It's an obvious scam to download. I'm about to give up on Polygon and it's suspicious. So right there, it's good. The, my, everybody's almost here on, on, on the consensus, which is this does not look good. And you're right, it's not looking good. Because what I told Diego, the first thing I said is, where is this email coming from? And he goes, oh, it's from, and he sent me this, this uh, screenshot, support at appdrag.com. That's your, that's it right there. It's the domain itself should always come from <clears throat> at Elipal, at Coinbase, at Binance, or whatever else it is. But there's also another undercover secret about this. Did you know they can do an email spoofing? Meaning that if they're really good hackers, they can use the domain of at Binance, at Coinbase, at something like that, and it looks totally legit, but it's not legit. That's why we have the rules underneath me, right? Second rule, everything's a scam until proven otherwise. You don't do anything. What you do is, this is an obvious one, it's very simple. But what you do is you go right to Elipal, to the official website, and you find the official website. And you, you, you send them an, a message and go, hey, is this legit? This is what I have right here. Now, I already told Diego, just dump this, man, this is dumb. But if you're ever in doubt, and it can happen, it's happened to me, over two, no, no, I would say three years ago, I was getting a lot of complaints from projects that were contacting me and going, hey, we just got an email from your official domain and you just took our money to talk about our project. Where is our video? And I was like, send me that, that email. And when you go through it, you can see that they spoofed my email from my official domain. Now, I'm probably easier than to say like a Coinbase is probably not much security on mine, but it is what it is. That's why I say everything's a scam. These things can happen. Make sure you're aware. It's not how much you make, it's how much you keep. And Diego and anybody else who fell, who fell for this could have just been like the greatest trader of all time, but it wouldn't matter because all your funds are gone. Anyhow, that's what we got. Hopefully uh, we'll learn something. And then lastly, to get into the negative news before we get into a little positive, this rumor keeps coming around and I'm gonna ask for everybody's help in this one. Uh, I want you to do your own research, but there's still this rumor circulating and the Bitcoin therapists, if you follow them on, uh, on, on X, they're very, very bullish on Bitcoin. They're very, very positive. And when, I, when he's put this or they put this, I kind of st stood up. Now, this same thing where there's rumors are circling that Coinbase is writing Bitcoin IOUs for BlackRock and they're suppressing the price. This is over the last three weeks, I want to say. I've heard the same rumor and it keeps getting dispelled, but... I want to bring it to the community and I want you guys to do all your own research you possibly can. I, I'm not here to spread FUD. I'm here to bring this information to you and you do with it. I linked this specific tweet 
in the comment section. Because, you know, leaders in the field like Dan Hill, he goes, look, there's no rumors of that. They're not doing that. And therapist says, yeah, this is from Tyler and also from Justin Sun. I know people are rolling their eyes right now. Justin Sun, come on. But uh, they, I've heard this from actually other individuals and they're worried about it. I'm not for sure if it is. But if you keep scrolling down, Andre says, this is a very likely BS rumor. Uh, Sandy Express or a time chain index has, the, has this pretty much nicely laid out. Check out this graph. And again, I want you guys to go through this. And Sandy says, look, I got all the addresses for the ETFs that I'm tracking, US and non-US. That's all you get. And then people have come back and said, well, what about this? What about that? But I mean, even in this one right here, it makes no sense because he says, your own website shows they have 183 million, correct or not correct. And that's not even close to being correct. I think the 183 million that he's talking about, he says, you, your, your website shows that they have 183 million implying Bitcoin, but it's the balance. They have $183 million on the top five addresses. I, I don't know when the date was, so you have to take a look at that. But you can see the Bitcoin balance right there. And he lays it out and then people going back and forth and so on and so forth. So the, the question I have, and there's a really nice chart that he has on his website, and it kind of lays out just, you know, where everything is. You've got your ARC, your Bitwise, BlackRock, Fidelity, and it's been tracked all the way since the very beginning. And I appreciate these charts. They look very good. But I'm thinking to myself, well, these are just the numbers that, that we get. Hey, Apollo does the same thing. We've talked about this numerous times in the channel as it tracks the inflows or total net flows, I should say of Bitcoin to all these different players. So behind the scenes, who knows if this is going on? Who knows if this is a regulatory issue? Who knows if this is just FUD? I don't know. I just give it, bring it to your attention and we can go from there. So that is that last piece. I just wanted to bring this out there because I don't like ambiguity. And especially if you see this same rumor and you don't flip out because I brought it up. If you see this somewhere else, you can be like, well, we talked about that. And then we went over it. Here's, here's some tweets I took a look at. Here's some data I took a look at. And this was my decision. So that's all we have. And then lastly, oops, mess this up. Blockchain gaming, making a comeback. I don't know if this is going to be the big thing, but I do like to see stories of blockchain crypto digital assets moving in the right direction. Uh, this is from Crypto Slate. They say blockchain gaming sets a new record, which is nice. I, I like those. With 4.2 million daily active users in August. Ronan continues as dominance. If you don't know who Ronan is, uh, they were the one of the first to to lay out axie infinity i know some people say hey, axie but hey they uh they were the pioneers and now they have a great game called pixels and that's leading the charge so so sure they they rolled out axie eh, it didn't really work too great but they fixed it and here we are so here's what we got ronin continues to dominate the blockchain gaming landscape highest average number of unique active wallets or uaws which, and you know my, my opinion on that, UAW, UAWs and on-chain analysis is great. It's fantastic. But remember, those things can kind of be manipulated a little bit. I think we've proven that or we've talked about that before. What matters is revenue. If you can produce revenue and it's on the books, gotcha. Well, you know, unless you're Enron. So anyhow, the second most active network was Op BNB with 688,000 unique active wallets during the period. The network experienced a 50% growth in active users. And then rounding it out with Scale Network, rounding out the top three, good for them, uh, recording a 10% growth during the month at 380,000. So if you're looking for like, like Web3 types of things and games and such like that, maybe Scale would be something to get, in, get into Ronin and uh, this OPBNB. But the question that when I read these things, and I, I know most of my audience isn't enthralled with this topic, I get it. And I think the reason is this, is because if you... My, my question always is, is how many how many people in the world actually really do play games? Because it seems kind of silly to me a little bit. But if you take a look at this is from Exploding Topics or Statista, uh, number of gamers in the world. Well, first of all, there's like around 8 billion people. Correct me in the comments of the exact number. And the number of gamers in the world as of 2024 is 3.3 billion. It's almost half. It's a lot of gamers. And, and it ranges from hardcore gamers to like the most casual of casual and people just killing time. All right. Gamers by region. The reason why I think that my audience doesn't get into this is because most of my audience is in North America or in the United States. Gamers by region, it's far outweighed in Asia, 1.5 billion. Europe, then comes Europe, then comes Latin America. And then a distant fourth is North America. 
And then we take a look, well, what about the, the age group? Obviously, gamers are younger. And again, my channel skews older. So why would people even talk about this? Because they're like, I don't play this, so nobody plays this. But you have to understand the global statistics. So right now, the age group, 18 to 34 years old, that's 38%. Under 18, that's 20%. That's 58. That's pretty much the lion's share. You got 60%. 35 to 44, 14. And then, of course, we get older, 12, 9, and 7%. And then lastly, what do people play? Well, actually, the reasons people play is to unwind, relax, and decompress. 66% or they're just filling time. And what is that? That, to me, is just casual games. Goofy, time-killer games. When you're standing in line, when you're in the bathroom, when you're waiting for something to actually happen, when you're just doing whatever. I think casual games, and I think casual games are going to be a big thing for Web3. And I actually asked this question just yesterday. I said, what's the difference between a free-to-play Web 2 game like, which would be the one, like Fortnite, where you can upgrade your cosmetic skins or outfits by playing with the in-game currency versus a free-to-play Web 3 game where you can upgrade your skins and outfits bought by crypto and owned by you via an NFT. And um, some people had some pretty good comments. One of the big ones was uh, there's really not much of a difference, but I just see this and I think to myself, why doesn't this pop off? But that's where we're at right now. And the reason, and some of the reason why I'm talking about this is because at this channel, I'm glad that there's a lot of moderators because what's gonna happen the next three weeks or so is we're gonna see an influx, say, of different personnel. And those people are not going to understand about Web3 gaming. And I'm going to ask you guys for your help, especially the moderators, to educate them as they come in. Now, remember, we want a big tent. What can we control? We can control our actions. We can control our thoughts. And we can control how we treat people like we talked about in the very beginning. So as we get an influx of these new people, they're probably going to be negative. But I need you to stay positive and help educate them and see the light about what we're trying to do here. And we'll see how that works out. That's it for today. So look, like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, everything we talk about is time sensitive. Now, if you wanna go over a little Q&A, and I see a bunch of questions right now, we'll go over that and, uh, and I'll answer the questions to the best of my abilities. But if you gotta take off, take off. I appreciate you, enjoy the weekend. But here we go into Q&A. All right.